Hello and welcome back to CSS3 Transitions. In this video, we're going to talk about the basics of a transition in CSS and how that works. Now, there are two different types of animations in CSS3. Uh, one of them is called an animation and the other is called a transition. We'll get to animations a little bit later, but for now and for the next few videos, we're going to talk about transitions. Now, a transition would be an animation that occurs in response to a change of state. For example, let's say you have an anchor tag and you want that particular link. Let's say the anchor tag looks like a button and you want that button to grow larger when you hover over it. Well, when you hover over it, that's a change of state for that particular anchor tag. Uh, we're changing to the hover state. So when we hover over it, we're going to cause a transition or an animation to occur. And that specific type of animation is called a transition in CSS3. And the way you create an animation is you define, first of all, what property is going to be animated. You define how long that animation is going to take. And you define the beginning and ending values for that animation. So to get started, we have a simple HTML file. You can find it in your project files folder under the lesson two folder. And it's a file called lesson02start.html. In this file, we have a couple of links in our head to a couple of different CSS files. The first one is a file called normalize.css. And I've got that open here. This particular file, it's not a CSS file that I created myself. It's a widely used file for resetting certain styles so that it's more compatible across different browsers. And you can find that file online very easily by going to Google and simply searching for normalize.css. And the very first search results should be this GitHub page where you can download normalize.css. Now in Chrome, if you just click on the download link, it will pull up the CSS itself. It won't download the file. It will just pull up the CSS. And then you can do one of two things. You can either highlight all of this and copy it into your own CSS file called normalize.css, or we could go back to the main page and then right click on the button, uh, click on save link as, and then you could save it as a CSS file. Uh, either way, however you decide to do it, I've already done that here and it's already stored in a subfolder of the lesson02 folder called CSS. I've also created a lesson2.css file which has some basic styles applied to it. So if we look at our HTML file in the body, we have a nav element, which is an HTML5 element. We've given it a class of main nav. This is gonna be the main navigation for our site. And this is gonna be a dark gray navigation bar that goes across the top of the browser window. Inside that nav element, we have an unordered list with a class of top nav. And then each list item within that unordered list is a different menu item in our navigation. So if we wanna take a look at what that looks like, we can open this up in Google Chrome and we can see our navigation. Now without the styles applied to it, this would just be a normal unordered list with some bullet points next to it. But with the styles that we've applied to it in lesson2.css, we've given it the look that we see up here. So we've pointed to the main nav class, which is applied to the nav element, and we've given it a background gradient. We see that up here at the top. It's kind of a dark gray to a medium dark gray uh, background. And we've used a few different vendor prefixes here to make sure that we get that linear gradient looking good on as many browsers as possible. And we've even given it just a solid background color as a backup in case these gradients don't work. And then we've also given it a width of 100% so that it takes up the entire width of the browser. This top nav class here has been applied to the unordered list, which contains all of the list items that serve as navigation items or buttons on this navigation bar. So for that top nav, we've given it a bottom border. It's this dark gray border down here at the bottom of our navigation. It's kind of hard to see. It's just a little bit darker than the than the background of the color itself, but it helps it stand out a little bit. We've given our unordered list a height of 30 pixels, list style type of none to get rid of the bullet points, margin and padding left of zero, and a width of 100%. And then for each of our list items, 
we've given our list items also that same dark gray gradient for each of these list items. We've given it a the same border bottom that we have applied to the entire nav. And then we've also given each list item a right border of one pixel, and that's these little dividers in between the buttons, just to help our buttons stand out individually. We floated them to the left so that they're stacked horizontally instead of vertically. We've specified font size, height, padding, uh, position relative, and the reason we have position relative is because we're positioning our anchor tags within it so that we can give those anchor tags a width and a height. And the reason we want to do that is because we want the entire width and height of each button to be clickable, not just the text itself. So again, feel free to go through all of the CSS and customize it however you want. Uh, what I want to do here is simply discuss how we can create a transition using the CSS we've created and adding a little bit more to it. So when we're creating a transition, the first thing we need to ask is what item are we going to apply that transition to? Well, let's talk about what we want to do here. We're going to go back into our browser and when we hover over any of these buttons, we want that button to grow in width. We want it to get a little bit wider and just, just to make it very clear uh, that we're hovering over that particular button. So we're going to apply this transition to the list item. That list item is going to be the object that's growing in size. So let's go back into our CSS file, our lesson2.css file, and we're going to look for our list items, which are right here, top nav space li. So this is the current CSS code for our list item. Now what we want to do is to apply some transitions to that list item. So there's a couple of different properties we can use. I'm going to go down here to the bottom of our list item, where our width is set to 150 pixels. We'll hit enter to go to the next line, and let's talk about these properties. We have a property called transition hyphen property. And that's where we enter in the specific property that we want to animate. So here we want to animate the width of the object. Let's say we want to make it maybe 10 pixels wider. So we would animate the width of this object out to 160 pixels. So again, the transition property we want to animate here is the width. So I'm going to type in width and the name of this property must correspond with the actual name of the CSS property. So the next thing we need is how long do we want this transition to last? And this is going to be in terms of seconds. So if we want this to last one second, uh, we would first type in the name of this property, which is called transition hyphen duration colon space. And then if we wanted it to last one second, we would type one S S for second. Now I don't want this transition to last quite that long. I want it to be pretty quick. So I'm going to reduce it down to about 0.3 seconds. I want it to last just about one third of a second. So roughly 0.3 seconds will get us there and, uh, and that should work. So the next thing we need to do is to define the beginning and end points of that animation. Well, the beginning point is the current width, which we've set to 150 pixels. The end point is going to be the width whenever we hover over that list item and we want to bring it up to 160 pixels. So the way we do that is we create another selector. So we'll skip a couple lines here, create a selector for the class of top nav space li colon hover. And then we'll put our opening and closing angle brackets uh, for that selector. So whenever we hover over that list item, we want to change the width to 160 pixels. And that's all we need to do to get this particular animation to work. It's going to animate from this value here to this value here. So initially when we look at the page, these two lines of CSS here aren't going to do anything. Those are only going to be triggered whenever we activate this hover pseudo class. Whenever we hover over that list item, then it will animate from 150 pixels to 160 pixels over the course of 0.3 seconds. So let's save that and let's see if that works. We're going to jump into Chrome. I'm going to refresh the page and hover over the home button and we see we get a slight animation there. Very cool. So we can come over here to the about button, does the same thing, products and contact. So it's a very slight animation. I might even want to bring that up a little bit more. So let's try bringing it up to 170 pixels. Save that, refresh, and now it it's a little bit more defined as far as how far out that goes. 
Well, let's say instead of the width that we wanted to animate the height of that particular button so it sticks out a little bit more. So I'm gonna go back to our code and we've set our height up here. So our starting height would be 20 pixels. Well, let's change our transition property here to height. I'm gonna use that same transition duration. And then for our hover, we're gonna change our height instead of our width. And let's change our height to 30 pixels. So we'll make it 10 pixels taller than it currently is. So let's save that jump back into our file or into Chrome, refresh our page, and now when we hover over each item, it animates downward. The height of it animates, and that looks really cool. And this is the reason I actually gave that bottom border to both the nav bar itself and to each individual item. Because if we're gonna make this individual item taller, we still wanna see that border at the bottom of it. So if by placing the border at the bottom of each list item, we still see it there when it animates downward. So those are the basics of creating a simple transition animation using CSS3. So in the next video, we're gonna take this animation and take a look at what else we can do with it in our CSS. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.